What's happening, everybody? All right, so doing some work on Sierra today and kind of killing a few birds with one stone. So one of the issues I was having was at wide open throttle, it was going a little bit lean, and that was using a half inch open spacer. One of the issues with running lean, or at least showing lean, and in this case around 13.0 on a carbureted setup is because of distribution issues, you could in essence have one or two cylinders that was running a little bit lean. And when I say a little bit lean, I mean more like 14.0 as opposed to 13.0. That 13.0 is just an average. So the idea that I had was that I wanted to richen the thing up but I also wanted to see if putting a four hole spacer would aid in torque production. I'd seen a lot of videos and read a lot of articles that that's something that these four hole spacers would do. And because this engine doesn't ever spin really above 4,500, 5,000 RPM, it's mainly a torque generating contraption, right? So not big horsepower, but super, super torquey tire fryer like you wouldn't believe. Love driving this thing. But if the four hole could help it along with that, give it a little bit of extra nudge where it already has an advantage, then even better. And there was another thing that I wanted to solve along the way. That was a very fluctuating fuel pressure issue. A lot of that had to do with the fact that even though this is a Philonic spacer, it's a good spacer, it's half an inch, the carburetor itself was still getting really hot and it was still causing the fuel in the bowls to vaporize. So I went with a full one inch four hole spacer as opposed to the half inch. Now what that did is it increased the signal to the, th to the carburetor itself, meaning now it's just running richer than what it was before. So what I'm doing is I am, well, I'm going to lean out the primaries because at tip in it was dipping into like the 10 8 10 9 to 1 range for air fuel ratio which is uh, admittedly a little bit rich and i'm going to replace the the springs this is an edelbrock carburetor we're going we're taking away the plain metal the very stiff springs and we're going with the pink springs now, this is just basically one step up, and I'm going to keep going up in spring, or I guess in, in a way down in spring, if you will, um, until it really does solve the problem. This is the first step in that, but I actually think this is going to be the answer to the issue. It's just going to not allow the primaries to go as rich, and that's by using these little needle and cup that come with that Edelbrock carburetor. So what that lighter spring will do is it will not allow the needle to come out of that jet as much, thus helping to lean it out just a little bit in that transition. And when I'm hanging the truck at what is in essence power and rich mode, it's gonna lean that up just a little bit so it's not really in the tens. I like to see about 11.5 would be an ideal number for me, 11.5, maybe 11.7 in that range. And then at wide open throttle, 12 -0 is is just as good. So, but I wanted to bring you guys into the mix. We're testing this with an old school LM2 wideband. So if you didn't see the Instagram post, I actually took a picture of me showing that old contraption. It still works like a charm, but you got to have one of those to really fine tune one of these carburetors. And so as I'm going through the tuning process, this is what you end up having to do to get one of these carburetors to run right. And for a lot of new school guys, and I say new school just meaning fuel injection, for a lot of the guys that are used to fuel injection, you will run carburetors richer, again, because of that distribution issue that you can run into. And, you know, it's not really a big difference in terms of power. In fact, running a little bit rich with a carburetor can actually yield a little bit more power more than what you may be used to seeing when you're tuning with multi-point fuel injection where you can really zero in on AFR. These, it's not quite as easy. And again, it's a distribution thing. And since it's basically just a giant controlled fuel leak, uh, toilet, if you will, um, one of the issues is that that distribution is not always the same cylinder to cylinder under all conditions. So Again, looking for an air fuel ratio somewhere around that 12 to 12.3 range 
12.5 is okay at wide open throttle, but I don't like to see much, uh, much leaner than that. And then at power and rich, at tip in, I like to see somewhere around 11.7, 11.5 is okay, 12.0 getting to be a little bit lean on the power and rich mode for these things. So anyway, that's what I'm up to. I'm going to get back to work. Y'all have a great one. We'll catch you on the next one.